In this final course tutorial, we cover Affinity Photo Selections. Selections are a way of selecting part of an image to work on, rather than editing the entire image. As you will see later, they're closely related to layer masks, which we've looked at previously. Affinity Photo comes with several tools you can use to create selections, which you'll find in the tools palette. Let's start with a simple example using the Rectangular Marquee tool. After selecting the tool, I can click on the image with my mouse. Whilst continuing to hold down the mouse button, I can then drag out a rectangular area. Then when I release the button, it completes the selection. The animated dotted line around the area is called the active selection. If I move my mouse over the selection, you can see the pointer changes shape. Now I can click with the mouse button to drag the selection and reposition it. But confusingly, what I can't do is change the size of the selection once it's made. If I want to make a bigger or smaller selection, I need to create a new selection. Sometimes you'll find that the existing selection gets in the way if you want to do this. It's then usually best to remove the selection first in the Select menu with the Deselect option. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of Command and D or Control and D if you're using a PC. I can then draw the new selection. Let's now look at some of the controls in the toolbar, starting with the mode buttons. You'll find these same buttons appear in the toolbar for many of the selection tools. When I've been using the rectangular marquee so far, it's been with the mode set to new. This means each time I draw with the tool, it creates a new selection, replacing any existing selection. But if I change this to add, the tool adds to the existing selection when I draw. The new area doesn't even need to touch the existing selection for this to work. We then have the subtract mode, which we can use to remove areas from an existing selection. And finally, there's the intersect mode. This combines the new and existing selections, so that only the area common to both is selected. As I mentioned, many of the selection tools have these options. For example, when I choose the freehand selection tool, you can see the mode options in the toolbar. What's often overlooked though, is that you can combine selections made with different tools. Watch what happens when I set the mode to add and then use this to draw a new selection. It adds the new selection to extend the one that I made with the rectangular marquee. This is useful because each tool has its strengths and weaknesses. You often need to combine tools to produce the best selections. For example, the rectangular marquee tool was quick and easy. However, I could only use it to draw a rectangular shape selection. But with this tool, I can draw irregular shapes like the sky. There are also three ways to use this tool, which can be selected in the type section of the toolbar. Currently, it's set to draw freehand. To use this, I click with my mouse to set the starting point for the selection. I then continue to hold down my mouse button whilst drawing around the area to select. When I release the button, Affinity completes the selection, drawing a straight line back to the starting point. Now let's look at the difference when I select the polygonal option. As with the freehand option, I can click and draw whilst holding down my mouse button and the selection follows the mouse. But with this option, I can release the mouse button without causing it to complete the selection. This allows me to move my pointer to a new position on the image. Then when I click the new point, it draws a straight line selection to that point. It's only if I click back on the starting point that I complete the selection. The other way to complete the selection though is by double clicking with the mouse. This then draws a straight line back to the starting point. The final option with this tool is magnetic, which is great for drawing along edges. Earlier when I tried to draw around the sky freehand, it wasn't very accurate. But when I'm using the magnetic option, I click once on the starting point. Then Affinity Photo detects the edge I'm drawing along and automatically selects it. I can also draw freehand with this option if I click and hold down my mouse button. To complete the selection, I move back to the starting point and click that. It's also a good idea to make larger selections in sections, which you can do by using the add mode. When it comes to using selections, it's not enough to just have an active selection. You can see this on this levels adjustment layer if I change it because it's still affecting the entire image. To limit the adjustment to only the selected area, we need to first convert the selection into a mask. 
This happens automatically when we add a new adjustment layer and there's an active selection in place. But we can also add a new layer mask to an existing adjustment layer to limit it. After creating a selection, it's usually a good idea to save it in case you want to reuse it in the future. Whilst you can turn a mask into a selection, we often end up modifying masks during editing. A better approach is usually to save the selection as a spare channel in the image and then create masks from this as you require them. You can do this from the Select menu using the Save Selection option. Then if we look at the Channel Studio panel, you can see the new spare channel. This is then saved as part of the image file, so you always have it available unless it's deleted. Let's clear the current selection now by pressing Command and D on the keyboard. Then to reload the selection, we can right click on the spare channel in the channels panel. This opens a menu where we can choose load to pixel selection. We'll clear the selection again and zoom in to look at the sky more closely. Notice the selection we used has created a hard edge to the adjustment between the sky and the ground. This is because we didn't feather the edge of the selection when we created it. We could have done this by setting a feather value in the toolbar, but that would have affected all the edges of the selection. If we just want to feather part of the selection as we do here, it's often better to edit the layer mask that's been created. We can do this by painting on the mask with a soft white paintbrush. But before making this change, let's select the area with the freehand selection tool. This will prevent the brush strokes from affecting the rocks on the horizon. I'll then select the brush tool and set the hardness to 0% to create a soft edge. I also want to use a low opacity of around 20% to help blend the adjustments with multiple brush strokes. Now let's look at a couple more extremely useful selection tools. The first is the Flood Select tool. This has the same New, Add, Subtract and Intersect modes that we looked at earlier, but they're only shown as icons. When using this tool, it's a good idea to have the source set to all layers. The tool works by sampling an area of the image and then selecting similar pixels. Setting the drop down to all layers means we sample all the image layers to create the selection rather than just a single layer. The tolerance setting controls how close a match a pixel needs to be to the sampled area to be selected. If I set a low value and click on the sky, it only selects part of the sky. But when I increase the value, pixels don't need to be such a close match. The contiguous option is also very useful. When it's on, a pixel must be next to another selected pixel in order to be included. Notice in this example, we only select the sky as a result. But if I turn off the contiguous option and select again, it includes other areas of the image. The other selection tool you'll probably find useful is the selection brush. This time we only have an add and subtract mode. Using the selection brush, I paint over the area I want to select and then the brush magically does the rest. If you want to know more about how to use the selection brush, watch this video next. In it, I explain a secret feature to give you greater control. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and the others in the course. If you haven't seen the other lessons, you'll find links to them in the YouTube video description along with my Affinity Photo books. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.